All right, everybody, we have got a fun head-to-head -head video for you today. One that we have taken your comments for the inspiration of. Uh, over the years, we've reviewed a lot of bikes. We've done a lot of very affordable shootouts and roundups where we try to test bikes that we think are affordable for proper aggressive mountain bike use and yet we still get called out for being brainwashed by the bike industry and that there's no need to test bikes that are so expensive so we said yes when Cy Rusher reached out and asked if they if we'd be interested in testing their $27.99 Ranger E fat bike 79 pounds of brute and force and we wanted to put it up against what we think is the best value for performance ratio e-bike on the market, the Fazari Tempeq. Builds starting at $59.99. This one goes up to about $7,800. Won an award in our e-bike shootout. So we figured what better bike to put up against the Cy Rusher Ranger. So buckle up, stay tuned. We'll see if I can keep all the skin on my arms and we'll go for a ride. See how this bike compares to a proper electric mountain bike. So here we are at our first challenge and this will be the trail obstacle or bunny hop challenge. So uh, we're gonna start out on the Cy Rusher and see how this 78 pound fat tire monster gets over the log. So regardless of who wins this challenge, we're already gonna have to deduct a little bit of a point for no dropper post. I'm gonna lower that seat manually in hopes of being able to pick that bike up and get it over this stump. Don't forget the kickstand. <laughs> I made it. I made it. I don't think I bunny hopped it and cleared it, but I made it and survived. So <sighs> heavy, heavy. Let's go with the, the Pizarri. So now we're going to be hopping on the nearly 30 pound lighter Fizari Tempeq. Peak. Uh, drop this seat post with the flash of an eye and off we go. Cleared it. That was quite a bit easier. I did notice the narrower tires sank into the sand on approach quite a bit more than the fat tires on the Cy Rusher though. So uh, for sand flotation, Cy Rusher gets a point. An unexpected benefit, um, you know, I knew it would be true, but I didn't expect to feel it. You can see the rut in here on the Fazari with the narrower tires. I started sinking way back here and my stability as well as my speed drastically started to drop. The Cy Rusher maintained speed way better because it was floating rather than digging in. So I was kind of surprised at how much speed I lost from there to my bunny hop point on the Fazari. Um, and even with the slower speed, I was still able to bunny hop, but fat tires do really float on sand, who knows? So beach riders rejoice. Okay, so the next test is the speed and nimbleness test. So I'm gonna come around this corner and sort of fish my way around a bunch of these rocks. Uh, normally on a bike like the Fazari, I would just kind of hit that first rock and jump over and go straight. But um, since that's not really doable on the Cy Rusher, I decided to do a nimbleness and maneuverability test. So we'll just snake our way through and see how fast I can keep my speed up and make quick line changes and uh, get through this rock garden and switch to the side rusher. Oh God. So speed, nimbleness, maneuverability, hands down, Fazari takes the win easily. Um, just a much better mountain bike, right? Um, this bike, the, the wideness of the Q factor and the cranks, bottom bracket was low, that monstrous front chain ring scraped on a rock on the entrance. The suspension was pretty uncontrolled and just bouncy. My feet were coming off the pedals. Um, the gear ratio because of that cassette, like there was just a lot of things working against this bike. 
um, beyond the weight. So this bike, faster, safer, smoother, and more fun. So point to the Fazari. The third challenge will be the timed climb section. Uh, not very technical and a pretty decent slope, nothing overly steep, but we'll uh, compare the two bikes power for kind of more of a sustained climb effort. And you guys will just be able to catch the last glimpse of this finishing segment. So um, let's see how they do. Heart rate's a little higher on the Fazari. Uh, my average speed was lower. Definitely more of a mountain bike feel. Um, had to put more torque, more energy into the drive unit. Um, it's a lot more natural of a feel instead of just kind of like the wind carrying you away. But uh, yeah, time speaks for itself there. All right, so technical hill climb challenge with like flying colors, absolutely the Fazari. The Q factor, meaning the width of the cranks and spindle on the Psy Rusher is ridiculously wide. Uh, the, there's a, a sensor that if you're applying brakes, it will cut power to the drive unit. So a lot of the more technical corners and steep moves you're kind of lightly feathering the brake and still pedaling. Um, this has a very on-off power delivery uh, because it is a hub drive motor and it just doesn't have the same sensors uh, and refinements that the Fazari does. So the ability to climb, the speed in which I was able to maintain through this, the suspension, instead of bouncing around, uh, I was able to kind of stay planted and more focused. So overall a more comfortable, a more enjoyable and a faster experience. So uh, I might even give this two points uh, for the, the victory there. That was awesome. So let's move on to the next challenge. Woo, all right. I was just over 20 miles an hour and stopped pretty quick. I'm trying to stop with doing as little skidding as possible, really relying on that front brake. So we'll mark it up and see how the side rusher does. All right, so we've got a, a stick and a mark and the handlebars are where the Fazari stopped. I'm gonna enter the stop point there with the same speed on the side rusher and see how we go. 24 is very sketchy on this. <laughs> All right, that was, <laughs> as hard as I could break. Uh, small rotors, single piston calipers, uh, probably a hard and durable brake pad compound. Well, 29 extra pounds. Uh, I think there's a lot of reasons why this thing took two extra bike lengths to break. So breaking distance points to the Fazari. Mark. Let's go. On your mark. Get set. Go. <laughs> okay, so speed, undeniable winner, Cy Rusher. I know it's kind of cheating. This bike has a maximum pedal assist of 20 miles an hour. And this thing goes 
up to 28. I think we were actually over 28 in the drag race. Uh, but wow, it, it takes a little while to ramp up, but once you start getting into that power band, this thing, it takes off. So, um, you know, if you're able to ride in an area that allows that, this class of e-bike and that speed, bike paths, uh, streets, OHV areas, I believe most bike paths have a speed limit that this would be over, but uh, city streets, I suppose, that thing is fast. It's got some power. Uh, so, Psy Rusher gets the point. So we've just completed the downhill racetrack and technical downhill challenges. Um, this is a downhill track that we test and ride a lot. Uh, the overall top to bottom time difference was huge. Um, I, it was well over a minute and a half on a, you know, three and a half minute plus downhill. So, um, I mean, that's a huge percentage difference in time. And then in our shorter, kind of more technical rock garden section, um, this was also faster. And not only faster, I just pretty much didn't have the confidence or feel safe to hit a couple of the more technical uh, maneuvers uh, because of ground clearance, suspension, the, the crank arm width, and the brakes. Like it was kind of a whole recipe of, of ingredients that left me feeling like I'd rather just hop off and try to walk a section but um uh, you know again we're i would say pushing this bike outside the realm of its capabilities and what it was designed for um you know although their website does i think call it an extreme dual suspension e-mountain bike um you know for actual mountain bikers i would say that it is not actually a mountain bike but uh my father-in-law has been putting a lot of time on this bike, on bike paths, gravel roads uh, around the ranch, and is absolutely loving this bike, having a great time. And so for him, would it be necessary to spend an extra $3,200 to get into a Fazari Tim Peak or another competitive e-bike? Um, I would say probably not. Uh, for those of you out there who are mountain bikers or want to be mountain bikers and will be spending time on trails, it will be the best $3,200 uh, upgrade you could possibly make. It will keep you safer, it will let you have a lot more fun. Okay, so our final test to conduct of the day will be the loading test. Uh, I would suspect this will definitely be an issue for people trying to get one of these bikes on their bike rack, behind a motorhome, into a van, um, anywhere else where movement is required, not on the wheels. So, Fazari, 50 pounds, in the van pretty easily. So, <laughs> next up, the Psy Rusher. <sighs> Lift with the back, not the knees. All right. Feels like a lot more than a 30 pound weight difference. But they are in. Uh, for those of you who are gonna put this on a bike rack uh, at 79 pounds, you're gonna definitely wanna make sure that your tongue weight and the bike rack weight will support that. But maybe get a ramp. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for coming along for the ride. That was a fun one to make. If you'd like to see any more challenges with affordable and expensive stuff, uh, let us know what products you'd like it to be, and we'd be happy to come out and uh, do our best to test them and beat them down for you guys. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It would mean so much if we had you back for future videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you out on the trails.